Let's see. Which station is Radio Trista? Ah, there we go. It's 9 p.m. on September 27th, 2020, and you're listening to Auburn Time, episode 005 on Radio Trista. I'm Callie, your host, and today we will have lots of great topics, such as information on the near replicant remaster that's coming out next year, some information on Final Fantasy 16, Scarlet Nexus, the Amazon streaming platform, information on the Xbox Series X and the acquisition of Bethesda, some great sales that are upcoming, and what I've been playing this week. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. So the first topic I would like to discuss is the Near Replicant White Snow Edition. I absolutely was thrilled to see this come out. You all know that I love collector's editions very much, and this one is no exception. If you look at the video for this game, how it's going to play, it looks like it's going to be much more in the line of Nier Automata than the Nier that we saw in the US, much more fast paced. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I hope you guys have a chance to play this game if it's up your alley. I know I'm very excited for this collector's edition that's coming out. So I hope if you really were interested in this as well, that you're able to get a copy. Currently, you can pick up a copy of Nier Replicant version dot one dot two two four seven four four eight seven three one three nine white snow edition for playstation 4 for 160 dollars it's also available on xbox one and i believe for steam so if this is something that you're interested in it looks like it's still available as of the recording of this video so definitely give it a look The next topic I would like to talk, talk about is the Final Fantasy 16 M rating that is currently theorized. This is great. This means they can do a lot of things with the series. So a recent email sent out by Square Enix may have just confirmed that Final Fantasy 16 will be rated M for Mature. The email which was sent from the European press branch of Square Enix highlights the Final Fantasy 16 revealed trailer, and towards the bottom of it features an official Peggy rating which is 18 or M for Mature in the States. This is very exciting, and I truly think that this could be something that could push the series forward. There really haven't been that many parts of the series that have been M rated, I believe the last one was Type 0, so this is an exciting thing indeed. So as you can see here, our next topic is Scarlet Nexus for PS5. I'm very excited about this game. I think it will be fun. I like the art style a lot, obviously. So Bandai Namco released a new gallery of screenshots and artwork of Scarlet Nexus, revealing a few new characters. We get to meet Sugumi Nazar, who has been the force that fights the others for 12 years. As you can see here, there's lots of new images of artwork from the game. I like the style. It looks like a Tales of game. Kind of God Eater as well. And I think they did a good job with the visuals. I'm really hoping that they can come, you know, and have a great game for everyone to play. So, Scarlet Nexus is going to be coming to new systems. However, I don't know what a release date is. I'm pretty excited for it though. So hopefully it ends up being good. I believe it's supposed to come to lots of different systems, so you should be able to try it out if you'd like. The next topic is that Resident Evil Infinite Darkness Netflix series was announced and a Yakuza Hollywood movie was confirmed. This is a big deal. I mean, I really like the Yakuza lore. I think that this is a good opportunity for a film the games are films in of themselves. But it's not a perfect marriage of thoughts, really. 
fun. I hope it turns out good. Movies from games generally haven't been the best historically. This could be something that's good. So if it's something you're interested in, definitely go check out the Resident Evil Infinite Darkness teaser trailer that you can find online. Our next topic is the Amazon announcement of their new cloud gaming service called Luna, which is a competitor of Google Stadia at its 2020 hardware event. And Amazon announced a cloud gaming platform called Luna. Obviously, it's a big deal. That there's going to be streams of games you can easily find, games from the same publisher. You can have more than 100 games available on the channel, which is great. Here's how Amazon describes it. Players who subscribe to this channel will have access to their favorite Ubisoft titles in up to 4K resolution, mobile gameplay, and access to new titles when the channel launches like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry 6, and Immortals Phoenix Rising the same day they release. This is the first of multiple Luna game channels in development where customers could play games from their favorite publishers and genres. As you can see here in the image, their controller looks exactly like a Nintendo Switch Pro controller. I'm kind of surprised that Nintendo is okay with this, but we'll see how that turns out. You'll notice that there is a headphone jack on the controller, which is very nice, and something that Nintendo should be doing as well. So there's lots of good topics to talk about with this, but most importantly, it's going to be a fairly decent price. I believe it's $5.99 a month. I don't know if that's in this article, but here's all the confirmed launch games, and there's a ton. There's so many. Look at this list. It's crazy. So many good ones. Bloodstained, Castlevania Anniversary, Control, that's new. It's great. What else do we have? Indivisible's on there. Pinter Dragoon Remake. Resident Evil 7. Res Infinite. Sonic Mania Plus. This is good. Some other good games, too. This is interesting. Cold Steel 3, but not the rest. So, oh, Use 8 Lacrimosa of Dana. That should be good. So, some good things. I don't know how well this will work out, but... I like the idea of it. I'm not gonna buy it. I like owning my stuff. So we'll see how this turns out. Uh, hopefully it works better than Google Stadia because that's a, it's a flop. On to the next topic. Xbox Series X and S pre-orders break basically the internet. Uh, we got one from Target. Uh, they went live this week. They even said when it was going to go live. It's basically as bad as Sony's situation where they didn't tell anybody at the time, and it's let everything fail. So, Amazon, Best Buy, and Microsoft struggle with all these pre-orders. Microsoft's page went down, everything went down, everything's crashing. It's incredibly, incredibly hard to get them because there's so many people with bots. Bots are buying these systems, not necessarily people. I'm a person. I bought mine. Does not mean everyone that's buying it is a real person. The bots are out in force, and the scalpers are horrible. Go look at eBay, all the people selling their pre-orders. It's insane. Now this topic, unless you've been under a living under a rock, you've seen this, where Xbox is acquiring Bethesda. This is massive. Even if you don't like Bethesda games, this is definitely... it's huge. It's so big. Like, I don't even... $7.5 billion. They had Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Starfield, Evil Within, Prey. So many games. So many games. Which means that Game Pass just became a better value. Because you will be buying Skyrim every day, forever, if you have Game Pass. Because Skyrim will be on Game Pass. So, it's a big deal. It's going to allow Microsoft to get even more games on Game Pass and move more to that subscription model that they're really striving for. That's their goal. So, 
I don't need to talk more about this. You guys know this is a big deal. It's massive. It's been all over the internet this week. So, let's go to the next topic. So, as we're talking about Xbox Game Pass, subscribers are, they jumped 50% to 15 million less than six months. That's insane. It's huge. I do not have Xbox Game Pass, nor do I intend to, to pay for it. It's not something that I would probably use, but I know a lot of people that do use it and want to use it. Especially families that just want to buy an Xbox Series S and pay for Game Pass. Their kids are going to be able to play a lot of games real cheap. And that's very enticing to parents who live on a budget. So hopefully if you're a parent living on a budget and you want to get that for your kid, oh, I hope you're able to. Because that's what the Xbox Series S was made for. That's the purpose of it. So, I think this is a big deal. Microsoft's going to keep growing their Game Pass, especially with the Bethesda acquisition. It's going to be really interesting to see how that turns out in the future. But, we all know, with these, the age of digital consoles and Game Pass and everything else, storage is going to be at a premium. So, if you want that one terabyte of extra storage, it's going to cost you. $220. It's really high. Now, I don't think they need to have a Gen 4 NVMe drive in the Xbox series. Because it runs at PCI Gen 3 speeds. You do not need a Gen 4 card in your Gen 3 system. You don't need it. It doesn't run that fast. So, I think that this is a marketing ploy for them to get it out, because you could easily put a Gen 3 system in there play for an expansion card, and it should be plenty of bandwidth for what they want. So it makes me think, at some point, they're going to increase the speed of the drives to be the PCI Gen 4 speeds. And it's a big deal. If they actually do that in the system, it'll be a big deal. That'll compete with Sony. So now that we've got the Xbox news out of the way, let's go take a look at some sales. So here's some gig games in the Big in Japan sale that are worth getting. Persona 5 Royal. Just go buy it. 40 bucks. That's a great price. Get it. Just go. If you don't mind it being digital, it's a great price. Tons of games. Kingdom Hearts. The whole thing. All of it. $30. You can play everything except for Kingdom Hearts 3. Just, just, this is great. If you like this series or want to get into it, you get all the games except for one for $30. Great deal. Yakuza. There's a lot of sales in the Yakuza series. Start with Yakuza 0. That's where the story starts. You get to play with these pretty awesome guys. Obviously, Majima Goro is the superior character. Goro is bae. He is just the best. He is the best. He is the best host of any restaurant ever. Anyway, if you want to give the Yakuza series a try, now's a great time. It's a great price. Final Fantasy franchise is on sale. So, get some great prices on the classics. But, this is big. The Nier Automata Game of the Yorha Edition is $20. It's $20 on Steam as well. Go go buy this game. This, this game is one of my favorite action RPGs of all time. I'll be streaming it again soon. I loved it. It's amazing. Gravity Rush 1 and 2, also a good price. You know, really cheap. This is the best deal of all of it. Like, I can't talk better about this game than I... It's amazing. Just go play it. Right now. Drop what you're doing. Go play it. it you'll, you won't regret it. Here's some other sales that are going on in the PlayStation Store right now. Uh, you could get some Azure Lane games for pretty cheap. Some Death End Request games. The new one, the DLC bundle, is $10. If you already have the game. The Last Unicorn, I'm sure that's a game somebody wants. A couple of other interesting titles. Sword Art Online, Alicia's Asian Lacorus, Last of Us Remastered. And if you really want to buy this game, 
I, anyway, here's some good sales. Go take a look. So, now that we talked about some sales, we're going to talk about something bad that happened this week. There's an analyst that says the game's $70, everyone's going to pay it, they'll be happy. And you'll be happy to pay it. Well, I don't know if I agree with this, but I do think it's going to make people consider buying games day one whether rather than waiting for them to get cheaper. I think it's going to lower sales of games for most people. So, my question for you this week. Please answer down in the comments. I'd love to see your thoughts. Will you think more about a game now that they're going to be $70 a piece as compared to $60? Are there games that you would have bought if they were $60 as compared to $70? Is this going to reduce the amount of new games you're buying? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So what have I been playing this week? Katamari played it Monday. It's a great time. Hilarious stream. Go watch the stream. It's so much fun. So much fun. We made an hour-long intro because of the fans' request. We're gonna do a 10-hour one because people wanted to watch it. They want to just have it play in the background. That's fun. I'll do it. You guys ask for it, I'll do it. I'm probably not gonna ever do it again. So this is your, your one time you're getting me to do something silly like that. But we'll be playing Katamari every Monday or early in the week. This week, we're going to be playing Genshin Impact tomorrow. So, please be looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. We also play Dark Souls for the first time. And only time. Uh, I hated it. I will never play this game again. It plays horribly. Like an old 64 style game. I'm not a fan at all. Zero. I hate it. If you want to go watch me suffer, go watch the live stream. It's up on my channel. And this game, I hated it at first. There's a three hour tutorial. Yes, not kidding. There is a three hour tutorial. Three hours, guys. Three hours. It's crazy. But once you get out of that, the combat is some of the absolute best modern combat I have seen. It's stellar. I love it now. I'm actually excited to keep playing it. So, if you are like me and you're frustrated with all the beginning parts, get out of the tutorial and the game really opens up. Give it a shot. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I recommend this game. So that's it for me this week, everybody. Thank you for watching this week's Aubin Time. And you guys have a great week. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up icon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And visit me on my social medias you can find at callychronicles.net. Thanks, everybody.